Since entering the league 20 years ago, New Orleans has never seen their franchise get past the second round of the playoffs. However, under President David Griffin for the last three and a half years, that luck is turning around. In the same summer where the Pelicans used their number one pick to select Zion, they traded Anthony Davis in a blockbuster deal for Brandon Ingram. Last year, they received Jonas Valanciunas and the 17th overall pick Trey Murphy in a trade which sent Eric Bledsoe and Steven Adams to Memphis. Finally, this past February, the Pels dealt for CJ McCollum. Along the way, the franchise stole Herb Jones in the second round of 2021's draft, signed undrafted free agent Jose Alvarado, and after those moves, the Pelicans are ridiculous, as it could be a special 2023 season for this well-rounded roster. Before continuing, just 12.6% of you watching this video are subscribed, so please subscribe if you haven't already. Also, please leave a thumbs up. It makes a huge difference and takes just a few seconds. Lastly, I'll plug my Instagram where I post NBA edits you can't miss. I left a link in the top of the comments for my Instagram. Thank you so much for supporting my content. In last spring's postseason, the Pelicans gave a 64-win Phoenix team a run for their money, taking two double-digit wins from the Suns. New Orleans didn't even have Zion, one of the top scorers in the league at full strength, yet impressively pushed the number one seed out west to six games, and at one point evened up the best of seven at two games apiece. We'll get right to the Kobe Bryant-esque Brandon Ingram, but aside from B.I., Jose Alvarado, Larry Nance Jr., Herb Jones, Jonas Valanciunas, and C.J. McCollum gave the Pelicans five other players who averaged at least eight points per game in the 2022 postseason. C.J. struggled so far in the preseason, but he deserves credit for being the ideal second option next to Ingram in the playoffs last spring. He averaged 22.7 points per game. Shockingly, McCollum led New Orleans in playoff blocks. Lockdown defender Herb Jones led the Pelicans in playoff steals, posting 1.8 of them per night. Versatile two-way stretch forward Trey Murphy also played well, as in the six-game series, Trey took exactly three triples on average each game and knocked down an incredible 47.8% of those deep-range bombs. Murphy III carried that production into this year's preseason, where he made 14 of his 25 three-pointers, second in the league only to OKC's Trey Mann. Trey's so far looked comfortable catching and shooting Trey's off Zion Williamson at dribble handoffs. In a game against San Antonio, Murphy even had seven threes. Defensively, Trey's screen navigation is above average, and it's going to be scary watching he and Herb Jones guarding on the perimeter together. Additionally, Trey's transition defense stood out in the preseason, as here he denies the entry pass from Lowry to Butler, and this play sees him get a hand on Josh Richardson's kickout. His transition defense was so good that he even knocked this one into his own net. Murphy III can also be your rim protector on the back end, as watch how he fluidly rotates over to force Adebayo into the turnover. But going back to the playoffs, where Jonas Valanciunas dominated the glass by posting a team-high 14.3 rebounds per game. JV's become an extremely underrated offensive weapon who you can throw it to down low and rely on. To be fair, Valanciunas isn't a quick drop coverage defender, but the Pelicans have enough versatility in their wing depth to make up for that. Regardless, the pure post-scoring of Lithuanian Lightning can have its fair share of value. The Raptors were a top seed in the East all throughout the 2010s decade, and despite getting exposed by LeBron, you can't forget Jonas was the starting center on those elite Toronto teams. Valanciunas isn't only a beast down low, but he's also a solid locker room leader. He was still that high-spirited presence even when he couldn't speak a lick of English in his younger days. The Pelicans are equipped with a multitude of switchable combo forwards, capable of spacing the floor out by hitting threes, who are complemented by experienced, wily veterans. The veterans consist of the aforementioned McCollum and Valanciunas, along with Larry Nance Jr. Also, I've said before, Devontae Graham even gives this team some extra experience, despite being a very young veteran. You can't forget about Willie Hernan Gomez, who was third on the team in preseason scoring and the leading rebounder. The brother of Bo Cruz and Willie is entering his seventh year in the association. In terms of the young talent who give New Orleans the right blend of experience and youth, the amount of undrafted signings and draft steals that the Pelicans have acquired over the last few years are starting to add up. Najee Marshall went undrafted in 2020, 
and 2021 saw Jose Alvarado get signed as an undrafted free agent. We'll get back to Jose, but should have been first team all defender Herb Jones was robbed with the 35th overall pick by New Orleans. In retrospect, it's incredible that 34 names were selected over Herb in last year's draft. Marshall, Alvarado, and Jones were key rotation players in last year's first round and continued to display they're capable of being relied upon in this year's preseason. Jose Grand Theft Alvarado is known for his patented steel positioning, which consists of occupying space behind the ball handler, taking it across the timeline, and sneaking up behind them like a salty child to embarrass said ball handler. It's a shame that's all Jose's known for, because as he says himself, can he shoot? Yes, I can shoot. Jose can definitely shoot it. Alvarado, of course, has one of the highest motors across the league, which he has to have given he's undersized at six foot one. But his ability to get into the heart of the opposing defense and break down game plans with those fundamental line drives leading to kickouts gets severely overlooked. Newest prospect for the Pelicans is Dyson Daniels, who was the eighth overall pick in this year's draft. Daniels averaged a team-high two steals per game in the preseason. A six-foot-six shooting guard, the Australian should help keep Ingram and Zion fresh, increasing the wing depth for Coach Willie Green to work with. All of that provides a great situation for one of the top duos in basketball, Zion Williamson and Brandon Ingram, to take advantage of. Since we looked at Zion in his own video, today we have to break down the shocking similarities between perennial 20 plus point per game score Brandon Ingram and five-time NBA champion, top five to 10 player of all time at the very least in the late great Kobe Bryant. Before that, the main reason why New Orleans put such a scare into Phoenix was because Brandon made up for Zion's loss by leading New Orleans in both points and assists per game. In that series against Phoenix, Ingram averaged 27 points on over 47% shooting from the field and 40% shooting from distance. His true shooting was at a 58.4% mark. Brandon has an array of highlights that look essentially identical to the Black Mamba. Scary part is, Ingram's two inches taller than Kobe was and even had the privilege of learning tips and tricks from Bean, who was around the Lakers organization after his retirement in 2016, the same year Ingram was drafted. It's evident in Ingram's footwork, balance, and shooting release that he took full advantage of learning from Kobe. Kobe assumed Ingram would be the next face of the Laker organization following his retirement, and after LA's front office advised Ingram to work with Bryant, clearly Kobe revealed some of his secrets to the youngin'. That's most evident when you key in on the poise Ingram and Kobe both have, maneuvering and falling away for contested turnaround jumpers. The body language of both Ingram and Bryant also look about identical, likely because Brandon grew up watching Kobe, and now he's got an eerily similar player archetype to Bryant. From tough pull-up middies to sound jab steps when facing up in the post or whirling dervishes through the lane, it's amazing how Ingram fluidly put to use the tips and tricks he received from Kobe. Thing is, despite Ingram having just turned 25 years old, he's already entering his seventh season and the legend Kobe was already a 28 and a half point per game score by his fifth year. Ingram's regular season career high is only 23.8 points within a season. However, he's done that in two different campaigns and last season, he averaged at least 22.7 points per night for his third straight year. Is it outlandish to compare Ingram to Kobe? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out and the top five commenters by December 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Today's Speaks winner is Alex O, who says Jordan Poole earned every bit of his new extension. He went from 8.8 .8 to 18.5 points in the span of three years, becoming the third or even the second option when the dubs needed a bucket. The numbers alone say it all, almost 10% up in field goal percentage, three point percentage, and free throw percentage since he was drafted. He's a hard worker and embraces the Warriors culture, very loved player in the Bay, and he can become the next franchise player. Thanks for watching, have a good one.